Today we're trying coffee shops from around the world. All right, so our first stop is Maz Cafe Con Leche that is Mexican inspired. So on Yelp, they're known for their abuelita latte, which I'm definitely gonna get. Then I'm thinking I'm gonna try another one. I'll do the Maz latte. Ooh, okay, I'll yeah. do hot. And then I'll, I'll do it like super hot. less sweet too. Super okay, so while I'm waiting for my coffee, the Maz space here also doubles as an event space and it's really cute and charming. I love what they did with this like photo wall. Very well decorated for the holidays and it feels really cozy. So for these two drinks, they're around $6 each plus tip. I paid $15 for both of these. In California for specialty drinks, I would say that's pretty fair. So price, check. So here we have the Abuelita, which is a latte with cinnamon, chocolate. It's kind of like a Mexican hot chocolate, but like coffee version. Oh, that's cozy. Really yummy. Yeah, basically like a hot chocolate with a little bit of coffee in it. The notes of cinnamon, it's so good. And then I'm really excited for their Maz latte. This is like a peanut candy that's very traditional. And it goes into this latte that has a little bit of hazelnut. And then I'm supposed to just like, ooh, it's very crumbly. I've never had this candy before, so I'm kind of interested to just taste a little bit. Ooh. Not too sweet, I like it. Stir it up, let it melt in there. It's definitely not sweet at all and I don't taste too much of the peanutty flavor in there. Eight out of 10. But this Abuelita latte definitely gets a nine out of 10. All right, now let's see where we're going next on our international excursion. All right, so next up, we are at this iconic Vietnamese coffee shop called Jung Wing Legend. It's a legend. And we're gonna get some of the strongest coffee I've ever had. So Vietnamese coffee, they basically percolate it in like a contraption like this. Gravity pulls it down. We're gonna get it with condensed milk, and then we're gonna get an egg coffee. You can get a tray like that. So fun fact, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am Vietnamese, but also that Vietnam is the largest producer of coffee beans these days. So it's gotta be good. Thank you. And to really qualify the Vietnamese coffee experience, I have my mom. So this coffee, as I was telling you guys earlier, they basically put the coffee grounds on top. <clears throat> Fill it with hot water and then just let it drip down. But it is so strong. You fill it up with this much ice to dilute it. It's like mud water. Ooh. Hello. And this right here is a Vietnamese egg coffee. It's kind of like a tiramisu without the cakey part. They just whip up egg with condensed milk. This delicious thick ooey gooey milky syrup. And then they top it with cocoa powder. Try the egg part. Mmm, sweet. Okay, so you're supposed to drink it together with the hot coffee, mm. but it is so hot. It tastes like a flan. Yeah, it tastes like a flan, like another Vietnamese dessert. Ooh, and this tray right here, it comes with this handmade cookie. Mmm, a little biscuit. Ooh. It's not like anything that you've ever had at like normal coffee shops like Starbucks. It's very watery with like a layer of creaminess in there, but it's not like milk. It's good. Yeah, it's really good. Not too creamy either. Yeah. And then this is done percolating. Look at the coffee. Whoa! Look at the coffee grounds inside. And then what's cool about this cap is that you use it to rest coffee grounds on top so it doesn't get dirty. Let me try this by itself. It is so strong. Oh my god, it's literally like mud. And then you add a little bit of the condensed milk in. Stir, stir, stir. You're actually supposed to add a lot in because it's so bitter. And you can drink it hot like this or you can dilute it with this cup of ice here, which I always need to do because it's so freaking strong. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the aesthetic. It's very nice with their little setup there. It reminds me of any other coffee shop. The price, let me tell you, this tray was $10. This egg coffee was like $6.50, so together it was a little over $15. I would say that's on the expensive side. 7 out of 10, a 9 out of 10. It's a little bit sweet to me, so 8 out of 10. Okay, and then this one? Six. I'll up 10. Six out of 10. I'm probably not gonna sleep tonight. Stop getting the planes! 
now we are headed to Japan, not exactly Tokyo, since it's in a like an office park. This is Lagu Cafe, a Japanese deli that we're gonna try to find some special Japanese snacks and drinks. So these are very interesting. You have melon cream latte, a matcha latte, of course, seaweed spread butter. I'm so curious about this. We should have tried this for the um, Japanese snacks video. I'll definitely get a hot hojicha latte and then I'll try your sakura latte if you can make that not sweet. Wow, this is so beautiful. So this is their strawberry sakura. I love all things melon. I've never seen this anywhere before, so A plus for originality. A hojicha latte, which is like a cousin to matcha. I realized I forgot to order anything matcha. So I'll just show you guys. They have a banana cream matcha latte. And on top, it's like banana pudding. And then we top it with like vanilla. It sounds weird but it's actually really good. I really like this cafe because they also have a lot of food items like onigiri. Then they also have bentos here. Hojicha, melon, sakura. This is like strawberry milk with a little bit of coffee in it and it's so good. There's a little bit of like a bitter aftertaste. And then we have the melon. This tastes like the melon ice cream with a little bit of the coffee in there which then also gives it a little bit of a bitter aftertaste but it's like giving more tea than coffee. It's so good. Koji cha is so good. If you guys have never had it before and if you see it on a menu because it's kind of rare to see that, I highly recommend ordering it because if you like matcha, you'll definitely like this. This is a more like black sesame roasty flavor. I think the drinks are so creative and honestly, it's not like anything I've ever tried before. I would say this place has been my favorite so far. Sakura gets 9 out of 10. Melon, 9 out of 10. Koji cha gets 9 out of 10. Okay, so Lagu Cafe was such a hidden gem. It was so charming in there it really felt like I walked into like a small Japanese shop they have a lot of food that I want to try and I'm definitely coming back for that matcha latte so far they definitely went for the most creative and inventive coffee menu so here we're headed to Utopia European cafe it's giving a little bit of British vibes a little bit of Paris vibes with the locks but stay tuned till the end to see if I found the most epic French cafe. But since we chose Turkish coffee, I found this place that has all of our Turkish delights. Should we go right there? But I love that they also have a lot of Eastern European pastries like borax, baklava, pastries that you don't find at everyday coffee shops. These Turkish delights are like jelly candy with coconut and nuts inside and they're so delicious. There's even a candy section. Kinder, Milka, Ooh, dark chocolate with pistachio. Hi! Um, what is Turkish coffee like? So she also told me about this this rose latte that they have with white chocolate, so I had to get... I had to try a little bit of everything. Wow. Thank you. And I was telling you guys earlier about the Turkish delight, and this is basically what it looks like. Okay, so this is their rose pistachio latte. It's their signature, and it wins for most beautiful coffee of the day. Mm. That's really nice. It's very floral with the rose. I always ask for not sweet because after a while, it just becomes like dessert. And I want to taste the coffee in there, right? Mm. I'd have to say this probably so far is the best coffee I've had all day. This is the Turkish coffee. What the girl at the register told me is that it's actually not as strong as espresso. So I wonder if this will be less strong than the Vietnamese mud water we had. There's like an acidicness to it. It's definitely not as strong as the Vietnamese one. I have to agree with that. It's not bad. I can definitely sit and like just sip on this. Price-wise, this was close to $10 with tax and this one ended up being $8. So the price is on the higher side for these luxury drinks. It's so cute in there I love that it was kind of like a little mini market too You can find Turkish treats that you never would find anywhere drinks wise. I'm gonna give the Turkish coffee an 8 out of 10. And since this is my favorite of the day, I'm gonna give it 9.5 out of 10. After you finish your Turkish coffee, there's usually some grounds left. There are sidekicks that read your Turkish coffee reading life future. Tell me if I should try to get my reading, my Turkish coffee reading somewhere. 
And now we're headed to Italy in a shop that looks like it's straight out of Tuscany. It's called Storico Cafe Articoli and Gelato. Let's go. Ooh, it's also a cafe and spaghetteria. Oh, their menu looks really interesting. So this is the Nani Dolce, which is a hazelnut almond latte. And then this is the Latte Verdi, which is a pistachio one. And pistachio to me is the epitome of Italian dessert and deliciousness. Ooh, that is nice. That is really smooth and nutty. It definitely tastes, mm, that's really nice. It's really good. It doesn't taste like the synthetic, like, syrup that they put in and then this one you get a lot of almond there or hazelnut or both that one is super delicious it's kind of like an amaretto cookie it's like an almond cookie and this one is the only one that really worked on their latte art all the other ones that we've been to so far has not really given me the beautiful like heart latte so i expect nothing less from an Italian espresso cafe. This one ended up being cheaper than all the rest. Two drinks with tip ended up being just $10. So each one, I think, averaged to like four, four fifty. That's really good for coffee here. Um, the aesthetic and the decor is also a spaghettiria. So they had like a gelato bar, they make fresh pasta here. It's kind of built in with their restaurant. <laughs> I am your godmother. I'd say it was very like Italian feeling. I'm gonna give the Nani Dolce an eight out of 10. And then the pistachio, I'll also give it an eight out of 10. are at Moulin, which is a boulangerie, patisserie, <laughs> cafe for our French coffee shop experience. How cute! What's like the most French coffee that you have? All right, so Cafe Au Lait is very classic French coffee drink. It's two shots of espresso and then it's filled the rest of the way with milk. Basically like a latte. And then I ordered another one. It's called a chocolate, a chocolate chaud, which is basically a hot chocolate with a shot of espresso in there. And then of course we can't go to a French coffee shop without getting some pastries. We got a butter croissant, like the cutest little butter croissant and a chocolate croissant. This place is popping. And then for two drinks and two small pastries, it's $15 with tip. Mm. Mm, this is real flaky croissant. You don't get none of those Costco crap. And then let's look at the chocolate croissant. A little lean on the chocolate. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Let's try their special drink. I mean, it's just okay. They put the chocolate powder imported from France in here. I feel like with French cafes, it's like simplicity is best and they let their very simple high quality ingredients shine. These are all very plain compared to all the other coffees that we tried. And then their cafe au lait. This is probably more my speed on how I normally take my coffee. And then each one comes with a little chocolate square. Overall, I'd say the ambiance is so beautiful. I feel like I'm transported to like a real French cafe even though I've never been there. The chocolate show gets eight out of 10. Cafe au lait gets nine out of 10. And overall, I think this is probably one of my favorite cafes out of all of them, but tell me what you guys thought. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.